Hi, Gay. Congratulations. You've been cast on the next season of RuPaul's Ru, RuPaul's Drag Race. Pack your heels and sissy that walk down to Sunset Las Palmas Studios, one of the oldest production facilities in Del Sol, Sol, Del Sol Valley and home to the main stage that's launched a thousand careers. The library is open. Will you serve Will you serve Glamazon real Glamazon? Mm -hmm. Will you serve Glamazon realness or or let your inner saboteur slay the workroom? And just just between us squirrel friends, the first maxi challenge will be an unconventional ball challenge. So don't forget to pack your patterns, kitty girl. Psst. Which diva did you prep for Snatch Game? I am a fan of Drag Race. I have watched every season of Drag Race, both US and international seasons. The only seasons I haven't seen actually are Holland 2 and the second season of Thailand. But otherwise, I've seen every season of RuPaul's Drag Race. And honestly, the best season of Drag Race, if you haven't seen it, if you're not on it yet, is Drag Race España, period. That is by far the best season. If you haven't seen it yet, as soon as you finish this video, go find it on the internet somewhere. Download WoW Presents Plus, find it someplace else, I don't care. It's the best iteration of the Drag Race franchise at all. Drag Race España, get on it. I don't even speak Spanish yet. But yes, I'm a huge fan of Drag Race. I do not have Drag Race fatigue. I'm a big proponent of seeing queer art in as many places as possible, celebrating queer stories as loud and as proud as we can. And I am absolutely obsessed that Drag Race has been brought to so many countries on so many cable networks across the world. World. So with season 15 coming out, I figured we would recreate the actual studio where Drag Race US is filmed. So let's take a little studio tour and see what goes on behind the scenes of Drag Race. Starting with the main stage. <laughs> so here's the main stage. Yeah, I was really surprised in how I was able to recreate this. I used the panels that came with the high school year pack and I inlaid uh, different lights, uh, wall lights in them and then I just changed the color of the wall lights to create something that's really a pretty convincing I think recreation of the backdrop of the main stage and uh, the floor is dance floors which of course is perfect if you want to have some lip syncs up here and then also we have Miss Paul herself this is the first video that I actually have created sims for I don't really create sims very often and uh, here's my rendition of Miss Paul and then just in front of the main stage, we have our judges panel with yet another version of Miss Paul. And actually, hey Rue, do you mind uh, do you mind standing up for a second? Can you just come say hi to our audience here? Oh, okay. So yeah, you really do wear sweats. Work. So here's our judging panel for the very astute among us. Uh, actually, the judging panel is to the right of the main stage if you're standing on it, but I couldn't really figure out how to make that work with the way that the slot was configured, so it's on the left here. But you can see we have a massive control room that's overlooking the main stage here. We got a bunch of cameras and equipment sitting around. Now, each of the stages in this lot includes a control room and a bathroom. Uh, but for here, we'll check out this control room, but as we go into the next stages, they're all extremely similar, and this is the biggest and most detailed one, so we're not gonna check them out on the tour. But here's our little sound stage. We got a bunch of TVs in here, a bunch of computers, then the equipment that came with the Get Famous pack. And then we'll go out into this hallway and we will check out a small break room that's in this stage. This is also the biggest stage. The main stage is the biggest sound stage that's included on the lot. So we have a little break room in here which has just about everything you need for a quick little snack between breaks. And you can't see it here. This floor is the uh, highest it can be. It's three levels, or not three levels, what is it? It's the third height. <laughs> it's the third height. Uh, and in the break room, I have a bunch of different pride flags hanging up in there. You can't see it here. You'll see it a little bit later in the video. But um, I thought, what better place to have a little bit of pride on display? And then here's just an example of the gender neutral bathrooms that are included uh, throughout the lot. Like I said, there are three of them. Here is just an example of one of them. We won't check out the others. I really wanted to kind of lean into the era when this studio was actually created, which was many, many decades ago. 
And so I thought um, maybe some of the original tile would still be here in the bathroom. So now we're going to go check out the remaining rooms in this sound stage, and we're going to have to go upstairs for that. And here we have hair and makeup, wardrobe, and Miss Paul's dressing room. So the first room here is for hair and makeup. I believe this lot would be compatible with the production studio lot that you use for the acting career. Uh, I know that you can't permanently replace that, but I did want to include as many elements as I could to make that functioning. I haven't played through that myself. I've only watched gameplay, um, so I'm not totally sure on that. I know we're missing a green screen inside a stage, but you could easily put that in any one of these sound stages. Um, but anyway, yeah, here's the hair and makeup room, and there was a little, I included a one-way mirror from the Get to Work pack in each one of these rooms because I thought it'd be really cool if you could like oversee the main stage and sort of the production area as you were getting ready. And then here we have wardrobe, so very simple. We have those wardrobe platforms that came with Get Famous and then some of the uh, clothing racks as well. But these are really simple rooms. They're just kind of modeled after the look and feel of the workroom, which we'll check out very shortly. And then at the end of this hallway, we have a dressing room for the one and only Miss RuPaul herself. <laughs> I really wanted to include a dressing room here. You may have noticed too, we have a trailer outside as well, but I wanna have a dedicated space for Miss RuPaul to get ready. And here it is, Miss Paul, she has her Afro puffs on today. Um, and uh, this really beautiful asymmetrical dress, which reminded me of this like neon cat suit that she wore once. But um, yeah, here's her dressing room. I just wanted it to feel really luxe and kind of like decadent and glam. A bunch of that kind of stuff going on in there, nothing major. There's also a huge wardrobe wall in there. There's an entire wall of clothing from the interior design pack, Dream Home Decorator. So we're gonna go outside this door here. We'll get a little overview of the outside of the lot. We have a little sort of like loading zone here, which, you know, we can imagine is what they use to set these stages and bring in props as needed. We also have a, uh, tra a trailer there for somebody's dressing room. Maybe that's where Michelle is, Carson Cressley. <laughs> and here we are in the workroom. So this is the whole reason why I ended up making Tim's to begin with is because I really wanted to have um, those iconic photographs of RuPaul all around the workroom like they are in the US version of the show. So you can see here, I did a little photo shoot session with Miss RuPaul and all the different outfits and hairstyles <laughs> that I picked for her. And uh, here she is sashaying into the workroom for the first time. And uh, yeah, here's the workroom. We have the iconic fake faux uh, pink brick all around the place. Here's where the girls get ready. One of the, some of the workstations. So we have three workstations here. We have some tables throughout as well for the girls to get ready at. And then I also included um, just two of these little wardrobe areas in the show. These are like all over the workroom, of course, one for each girl. But uh, here we just had room for two. So I did want to, you know, include the most, the most that I could with the limited space that I had. And then as we turn around, we see Mr. Charles. <laughs> so here's the second scene that I created of RuPaul in his mask form. And uh, yes, he is getting ready to talk about the maxi challenge with all of the contestants. And he has just called in our pit crew. Work. <laughs> so you can see here we have our pit crew, some more really cool photographs of RuPaul in the drags. And then there's just a bunch of materials sitting around for the girls to craft their looks for the unconventional ball challenge. So yeah, we just have this massive pile of a bunch of different stuff. And then just beside the workroom, we actually have a small little filming location that I thought would be really uh, handy to include here, which is just the place where the girls film all of their confessionals. So yeah, just a really tiny little room here. We're using the backdrops from the Moschino pack. And uh, yeah, I figured this is where the girls would go in, give their little talking head confessional looks, which I feel like I'm doing here today. Uh, but yeah, this is, <laughs> I just thought this would be something nice to include for a little bit of realism. And then just above that area is where the control room is for this soundstage, which we'll see in a little bit. But yeah, here's an overlook of the workroom and kind of how everything's laid out. It's also set up for untucked with some couches and some drinks out there. Um, and here we have a handful of cameras that are capturing those 
very shady moments from our girls. And then just beside is our third stage, which is set for Snatch Game. So here we have RuPaul and the pit crew doing some camera tests, making sure everything is ready to go for the girls to get on set. And yeah, I feel like this is a really convincing illusion. But um, yeah, it's set up to recreate any Snatch Game moments that you would like to, if you would like to. Uh, so we have one thing that I used here from the Get Famous pack are those little cue marks that go on the ground. I think that you can actually only get them in debug, but you can see here uh, RuPaul is delivering a saucy story. Um, so those are actually really handy for, you know, sort of like gameplay footage or telling stories. Um, that's also what I was using for his mark uh, on the door in the workroom, which he stands at up on the stairs. But yeah, it's just a really easy way to have a sim address an audience. Um, but I also put the microphone there, which you could use, of course, as well. So yeah, here's our here's our Snatch Game setup. We have room for two contestants and eight participants of the Snatch Game. And yeah, that's my take on the Drag Race Studio. So for the rest of this video, we're going to do a couple things. Quickly, we're going to check out what this lot looks like during gameplay. So just using the gameplay cameras instead, because I feel like those first person tours can be a little disorienting. And then we'll also really quickly just check out the sims that I created for this. Uh, like I said, I don't usually make sims, um, but I shared these on the gallery if you're interested in using them for your gameplay. So we'll, we'll check those out really quickly at the end as well. So yeah, here is uh, an overview of the lot. And you can see we just got a bunch of stuff out here. I wanted this to feel like, you know, people were actually using this space. We got a couple different setups, some areas maybe production is working on. Uh, we have a bunch of little like storage areas kind of around different props and screens and cameras hanging out and the alleyway between the stages. So here's what the main stage looks like. Um, on the second floor is where we have all of our sort of rigs. Is that what we would call them? I should know this. But yeah, we have we have sort of all the all the architecture that's holding up the lights and things. Here's our hair and makeup and our wardrobe and dressing room areas that are all overlooking the main stage. And these are just above the control room, break room, and bathroom, all of which lead behind the main stage so the girls can walk up onto stage. But yeah, I was really happy with how kind of like the layout of all of this worked out. It felt really functional. And then here's the workroom. Very similarly, we, you can see there's a sort of like a small channel that runs behind the workroom itself. So this is where the girls would enter the workroom for the second time, where the pit crew and RuPaul walked in in their respective doors. Just behind the workroom is where we checked out that little confessional area. And then just above the confessional area, as I mentioned, is where we have our control room. And I really like these second story control rooms. They're pretty cool because they look over the entire space. Um, and the Snatch Game Studio has that as well. But yeah, I thought that that was a pretty cool little effect. And then here is the last stage where we have uh, our set for Snatch Game. Here's the control room on the second floor. And yeah, I, I just really tried to make this feel really detailed and add a lot of sort of texture to the walls in some way, because, you know, with these sound stages, everything is just black. And so it can feel really kind of simple and not detailed. And I really wanted this to feel like an actual working studio uh, with, you know, functional elements and rigs and uh, different types of contraptions all around that would be used for the filming process. But yeah, you can see each of our stages are created sort of with these faux walls and they each have channels behind them for people to do what they need to do. And then here is just to look at everything with the walls down as well, just so you can again get a better idea of what this lot actually looks like during gameplay. With the main stage, a lot of it, a lot of it, a lot of it you can see here really comes down to lighting and using different color lighting to create those effects. I mean, honestly, it's the same with actual Drag Race. The background on the main stage is just white and it's completely transformed every time with the way that they light it. It's cool that I was able to recreate that same sort of effect in The Sims using colored lighting. And then here's just a really quick look at the uh, layouts from a top down view because I feel like this is also helpful sometimes. And now we are going to very quickly check out the sims that I created for this video and for this lot. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in. I think for my fan builds in the future, I'm going to be creating sims uh, because I actually had a lot of fun doing this. But yeah, let me know if this is something that you're interested in seeing as a part of either these 
tour videos or maybe as a separate video where I do um, like film the process of actually making these sims, although I do take forever to do that. But anyway, here is Miss RuPaul Charles. Um, I did create two separate sims and it's because, listen, Miss RuPaul, when she is in the drags, she is tucked and pulled and she looks much younger as her, you know, everyday self. So I wanted to create two sims where, I mean, the other thing too is like with all the padding and the everything, I mean, she's completely transformed. Even her posture is different when she's in drag. And so I felt like trying to achieve the duality of this in one sim really wasn't possible. So I created two separate sims, a mask presenting and a femme presenting sim. So here is uh, RuPaul in her femme form. And I did five different looks, actually six, we'll see. I didn't do all the looks for these Sims. Uh, it was just taking me a really long time to even figure out what I wanted for these looks. And it was really just for the video. We do have five different looks here representing sort of different eras of Miss RuPaul. There are two kind of like Glamazon looks. One that the reference point really for me was like season the season seven promo with Trixie and Katya. And then, of course, her Viva Glam look, so iconic. I thought that that was really cool to include here in this all-leather look. And then, as we saw in the video, I did include her formal look, which is this lovely lavender blouse with a nice pair of sweats and sneakers. <laughs> and then here is Mask Presenting RuPaul. So like I said, this is using the exact same base as the previous sim, but this is a sim that is aged up. And I also made some changes to the body in terms of like posture and body shape and things like that, because of course here RuPaul does not have padding and a corset and all of that on. So here's RuPaul. We're seeing a little bit of age in her face. We're seeing RuPaul's nice little freckles that they have. And then just a couple different of these very nicely tailored suit looks that we see RuPaul in all the time. <laughs> I also included this little sweatsuit because it reminded me of... Uh, that moment in the most recent All-Stars with Jinx when RuPaul is the reporter outside of the judge show with his little elf ears on. Um, but yeah, just standing there in a sweatsuit. So I wanted to include that. And uh, otherwise, yeah, we just have some really, really sharp suits here. RuPaul loves a monochromatic look. So uh, I included a couple different looks that are pretty monochromatic, which is nice with just like a nice accent color. And then we have our pit crew boys. Hey, pit crew. Oh, pit crew. So uh, most of these, these were mostly just randomized and then I did kind of like some slight tweaks to them. Um, but yeah, these are mostly just randomized. Now the pit crew boys only have, well, they have technically they have two outfits. <laughs> so they have the little speedo look that we are seeing here. And then they also have a variation of this speedo look with some slippers because I thought that that was just so stupid to include. <laughs> so stupid but yeah they just they just have this look and yeah just figured we could check them out really quick because why not very gorgeous boys very nice but yeah like i said these are mostly randomized just with some slight tweaks and i thought they were a nice addition plus the photo on the gallery is actually really cute with the, with all of them both rupauls are just like standing in the center with the pit crew boys on either side of them i thought it was really nice but but as I said, these are available on the gallery if you would like to download them yourself, as is this build in general. My name on the gallery is the same as it is here, which is just Patrick Creates. So you can find this build and these Sims uploaded separately there. I would love to know what y'all think of this. This is very different than the other videos that I've made thus far. I'm curious, what is the cross section between the people that have found my account thus far and Drag Race fans? Who of y'all like Drag Race? Who watches Drag Race? Who is a fan of the race? Please also let me know in the comments who you are excited about for this season. For me, it's Miss Estides. And uh, look-wise, I'm super into Sugar and Spice. I just feel like, I don't know if they're gonna give much of anything in terms of personality. I mean, we'll see, they might. Maybe not for me. It might not be for me. But Miss Estides, a girl. <laughs> And maybe Miss Laduka. Oh, maybe Miss Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Maybe Lux Noir London. I don't know. I'm curious to see what these girls give. If you were interested in Drag Race and you were not satisfied with the Meet the Queens because I thought it was actually super boring and all the girls gave the same answer, Entertainment Weekly uploaded some really good interviews with all the girls. They're like 15 minutes each. They're all individual and they ask them actual real questions. They're really cute. So if you're into the show and if you're watching it today, the day that I uploaded this video, 
and you want to pregame some of these girls and learn a little bit more about them, check out the Entertainment Weekly channel. Otherwise, I think that's all I have. If you like this video, if you like Drag Race, please like the video. I'd appreciate that. And I am here every week. I do fan builds. I do fantasy builds. I do cozy core kind of recreations. Uh, the next build I actually have coming up is a luxury mega spa that was inspired by one of my friends here on YouTube. I'm going to be posting that next week. Uh, so yeah, if you're interested in any of those things, please subscribe. Come back next time. And for today, I think that's all I have. So until next time, y'all. Enjoy Drag Race and go watch Drag Race España. <laughs>